Hey everyone, Boone here. On today's episode of Tuesday Tools, I'm gonna to be looking at monkey wipes for Adobe After Effects. This is a really powerful tool that allows you to apply quick transitions. Now you can apply them with a simple click of a button, or you can get a little more in depth with the customizations via a number of different parameters. These transitions are incredibly dynamic and you can create a wide array of different looks. It's really gonna speed up your workflow and help you create some animations quickly. Now, if you end up liking it and you wanna purchase it, please use my affiliate link down in the video description. That's how I support my channel. All right, so I'm inside of Adobe After Effects. I've got the Monkey Wipes panel open. And for this first example, I wanna create a simple text animation just to illustrate how easy this plugin can be to use. Now, don't be intimidated by all the parameters you see here. There's a lot of customization options. Uh, nevertheless, you can still use this really, really easily. Up here is the text panel. I'm gonna just quickly type in the word France. And now I'm gonna go to my timeline here. And all I need to do is set a workspace or a work area. I'm gonna set that to around maybe 12 frames, half of a second. Now I'm gonna go up to the character panel and I'm gonna set my font, set the size of my text. I need to set all this up because as soon as I use monkey wipes, it's gonna not only generate the text, but then it's gonna add those animations as well. So I wanna make sure the text is ready to go. Now all I need to do is go over to the monkey wipes panel and hit do it. Now we can see it's working here. It's generated the text layer. Now it's applying the monkey wipes magic to it. Now let's have a look at what happened. Now essentially what monkey wipes is doing to this is splitting it up into a bunch of little groups, applying transform and wipe effects to each particular split or group, and uh, we're kind of randomizing each of those to give you this really dynamic look. So let's take a closer look at the panel and, and see what's going on here. First up is the source. It has text panel selected, so it's generating what's up here in this text panel. I can uh, select layers here. Under animate, it has in and out, so it's animating it in and out. I can specify if I want it just to animate in or just to animate out. Since I have in and out selected, there's a hold section, and these are the number of frames that I want the animation to stay up in between uh, the in and out. Just below that is splitter. So. Again, Monkey Wipes is splitting this, so you can specify how you want it to be split. Right now it's set to rectangle in a grid four by four. So if I go back down on the timeline and look and bring my playhead over here, you can kind of see that right over here there's about four different uh, rows here. So a grid four by four gives you 16 different pieces. So if I open up this layer, you can see right here there are 16 different pre-comps, which are these different split elements. And if I zoom in here, there's all these different markers um, under the work area. And those, uh, this is where it gets a little confusing. So the way the animation works is it places, it equally spaces the beginning of each split group to start within that work area. So you might, uh, I incorrectly first thought that, oh, that work area is gonna be the entirety of my animation in, which is not the case. It's just the beginning of each individual split. The actual duration of each individual split is controlled under the speed section here. And you can set the speed to constant random. You can change the different um, specifics here, but you can also type in the duration of each, which is currently set to 30 frames. So each of these is starting here and they go for 30 frames. So by the end here, um, the animation in goes for another 30 frames, as you can see. And I can actually move these around. So if I move this last one, that just means that last split is going to show up a little bit later. I can move it way over here. And you can see this is uh, the, the individual part right here that I'm adjusting. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And then right here you can see that it holds for another 30 frames and then triggers the animation out. Right under the splitter is the grouping. So grouping specifies how the transform and wipe effects are gonna be applied to your individual splits. And it really controls the different varieties of animations. So if you bump this up, you can totally change the look of your animations, but it can be more taxing on your computer system. Just under that is multi-layers. So again, if you're working with multiple layers, um, and I'll show you in, in just a minute here, when you apply it to multiple text layers, you can have them sequence out. So this is gonna do your first text layer, then your second text layer, and they'll animate in, out, in, out, and it looks very nice. Just under that is the colorize panel. If I click this button, I have all these different palette options here. Super cool. Again, this is the speed section. Just under this are the transform and wipe specific. So again, the transform and wipe effects are applied to these split groups. 
um, and you can specify how you want them to be applied. So right here, this one is set to random, but look at all the different presets here. I can have it scale up, scale down. There's just um, an endless number of different looks that I can apply here. And if I have it set to random, each time I apply this animation, it's gonna look completely different. And that's good if that's what I want. I can set the ease and intensity. Um, so if I want it to kind of ease in and the intensity, if I want it to kind of fly in really intense or have it um, do it kind of at a low intensity. And the same with the wipe. I have a bunch of different options here. So now let me quickly show you a multiple text um, option. So I'm gonna go back up here and I'm gonna type France is cool. And I'm doing these on different lines. I'm gonna quickly change the colors. Let's turn on this color palette and just leave the red, white, and blue so it's French colors and set this to, actually we'll leave that on layers. You can see that I can do a group or random. I think everything else is fine. Let's just see what happens when I select do it. Okay, there's the text, it's applying the animations. Now let's see what happened. Okay, actually, and it's only applying it to one individual layer because I have the paragraph section selected here, which if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But I had my color palette set to layers, so it's not applying that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit undo. And now I'm gonna switch from paragraphs to lines. And now watch what happens. So it's applying the text and now it's applying the animations, but watch what happens down here in the timeline. Now it's gonna split these into three different layers. We could see the markers and now you can see these are perfectly timed. One animates in and then animates out just before the next one. And each layer is colored uh, based on my palette. Now in this example, I have a map. Um, this is just a simple shape layer here. Let's see what I can do with this. So I'm gonna switch um, my preset. There are a number of different presets. Um, I even have a surprise me to kind of randomize it. Um, let's see, yeah, let's do maybe, let's go with the accordion theme. And I'm gonna switch the source to text layer to make sure that it's, or, or I'm gonna switch from text layer to layers to make sure that it selects the actual layer. I'm gonna set the columns to three. I'm gonna turn on this color palette again, but I'm gonna switch this to random and see what it comes up with. And I'm gonna actually turn the intensity down to low. Now let's see how this goes. That's looking pretty cool, but actually I'm gonna undo that and then I'm gonna go back to wipe and I'm gonna select something different for wipe. Let's have it do a circle. I'm gonna switch that to circle and I'm actually gonna lower the time in my work area just to make it a little bit faster. Okay, cool, but I had it set to random so all of these were randomly colored red. If I wanna change the colors here, I can dive down into these uh, splits. Let's go to the first one, which is the left. If I select the layer here, here is the color. So let's say we wanna change that to blue. Ooh, and I have purple selected. Why do I have purple? Um, so that's blue. And let's make this middle one white. So now I have this cool blue, white, and red, which I think the French flag is actually in that order. For my last example, I'm gonna create like a full page transition. So for this, I'm gonna go grab the rectangle shape tool, and I'm just gonna double click on the tool. That's gonna to add a new shape layer that fits to the uh, comp height and width. I'm gonna rename this layer transition. And now I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna grab that accordion uh, preset again. I'm gonna switch from columns to rows. And if I leave the grid to four, and I'm gonna make sure to go select that color palette again and make it red, white, and blue. Set it to random. And once again, since this is a transition, I don't want it to hold for very long at all. So I want it to hold for one frame and I want it to be fast. So I'm gonna set this speed to, let's do 10 frames. That might be way too fast. Let's just see how it looks. So I'm gonna grab the layer and so, oop, I gotta set the source to layers. And I'm gonna hit do it and we'll see what happens. All right, so there you have it, that's Monkey Wipes. You can see how using this tool, I quickly created an intricate text animation. I animated my France map, and then I put together a full page animated transition, and this was all in just a few minutes. So if you wanna learn more about this tool or pick it up, please once again, follow my affiliate link, which is down in the video description. And if you like this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more content like this, just subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell.